generator in this is called ammonia absorption. And it's critical that you have the refrigerator level in the trailer. Because basically what happens, there's no compressor in the refrigerator. There's ammonia gas that circulates in there. So if the refrigerator is at absolute level, you can build up air bubbles in it. And so it'll damage the refrigerator and it potentially can damage the refrigerator and it won't run properly. So it's, it's kind of important to make sure the trailer is level. So try and remember to carry like a carpenter, small carpenter's level with you. And they do have stick on things. In transit it's okay because of course in transit it's going up and down and back and forth. But if you leave it setting for any long period of time, and it's okay even if you stop for a half an hour, 45 minutes to have lunch or something, that's okay. But set up on the campsite, you really want to make sure it's level before you leave the setting for the weekend. So of course when you're backing up the trailer, before you even do anything as far as unhooking the trailer, put your level inside on the floor and make sure it's level side to side. Now if it's not, you're still hooked up, so you can put a board or something underneath one side or the other to level it. And inside, we have these things called Lynx levelers, which are made out of plastic. They look like giant Legos. I swear by those things, because that way they don't get soaking wet, the slugs don't crawl over, or anything like that. So those are real handy. So once you level it side to side, then get yourself unhitched. And of course also, when you're backing in, make sure you're close enough so you can connect your electricity and your water. And here's the filler for if you're dry camping. You've got a fresh water tank in here. Excellent. So you can use this to fill a fresh water tank. So of course, like I said, when you're back into the site, make sure you've got enough distance so, enough, so you're close enough for your hose and your electric. Right. And there's a big cable inside. Okay, that's and a 30 amp cable. That's a 30 amp cable. This one is a... That's for the fresh water. All right, that, that requires some kind of other coupler, huh? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. They do have these plastic tubes that screw onto the end of a garden hose, uh -huh. which makes it easy. But the thing is, you should also get a pressure regulator. Okay, yeah, I've got one of those. Okay. Already. The pressure regulator fits perfectly in there and stays in by itself. So if you put the pressure regulator on the end of your hose and just put it in there, it'll stay right in place. So it makes it real easy to fill that way. Okay. And uh, do you know about the white water drinking hose as opposed to a garden hose? Can I go through all that? Yeah, you need the white water drinking hose specifically because that way there's no what it BPAs or whatever they put in them, and also it doesn't taste like a rubber garden hose. Oh yeah, I've got one of those already. Okay, too. as long as you got the white hose, that's the good thing to have. That. Is there a specific length you recommend? Um, it depends on the campgrounds. If, if you camp at Salisbury very often, you know some of the sites, especially the ones in row A, are a long way away from the spigots. Yes. And so I usually carry a 50 foot, and that's usually been enough. Okay. The only time I've needed more is, as a matter of fact, once I was camping in Pennsylvania, Slippy Rock with Nancy's group, mm -hmm. and there were no hookups there, but I had to fill my water tank and I had to borrow somebody's hose to get up to the spigot, which is up by the bathrooms, to fill it up. Okay, so 50 foot. So 50 foot's normally enough okay. in most circumstances. And here's your 30 amp plug over here. You see there's one blade on the bottom that's different. Yep. And so, and you'll notice in the plug, it's also one blade different. So what you do is push the plug in, turn it about half an inch or so, it'll lock in, and then you've got the threaded collar to hold it in place. And you see you've got two sewer connections. Yes. One for gray and one for black. Okay, how do you know which one's for gray and the black. larger, the larger one is the black water, which is the toilet. Okay. And see, there's a smaller, and it's got a gray blade on it also. Yep. And also the, the valve itself is smaller. If you're at a site that has hookups on it, sewer hookups, then you can leave the gray water connected all the time. The black water, you want to leave it closed, because that way, if you leave that open all the time, then of course the solids stay in the tank, the liquids flow out and the solids stay in the bottom of the tank. So that way, if you let it build up in there, Every as soon as you open it, everything flushes out. Ah, yeah. good. Okay. And there's also liquid and tablets you can put in to help digest all the solids. So it's a good idea to carry that. I use Camp Camp myself, but there's a few other different products out there on the market as okay, well. Okay, good. And that's safe for the tank too? Yes, yeah, that's very safe. It's made specifically for the for the gray water, for the black water tank. So it's safe for the tank. And this of course is your vent for the furnace. It gets hot, so just make sure you don't put any, you know, log furniture or anything like that up against it, because it does get pretty warm. 
And this is the back of your refrigerator. And this will, once you turn on the refrigerator, this has a, an automatic start on it, electronic start. So this will come on by itself. But the only time, you do want to open this once in a while, just to make sure you don't get any critters building nests in here. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to check that every once Some in a while. Some people ever screen or something here. Uh, you could, you could probably put screen on without interrupting the flow too much, the airflow in there. Just, yeah. Well, it's not that big. I mean, bugs will get in. Oh, yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't think uh, mice can get in through that. And speaking of critters, if you have any critter problem, because since I have three trailers and two vintage cars, I always make sure I critter proof everything for the winter. And it used to be everybody said to use mothballs, but they stink and it's hard to get rid of the smell. And then more recently, people started using dryer sheets, bounce dryer sheets, specifically bounce original set dryer sheets. When I used in mine, I never had a problem with Harley's barn and it's good with the rats. But so. then. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to be famous. This is going to go on Facebook. I'm going to lunch, guys. I don't know if you'll be here when I get back or not. You never know. But if you are, if you are, if not, you're I'll not. I'll see you. Ooh, yeah, see you. <laughs> Thank you. Paperwork's on the desk. I want you paperwork. Can okay. Set, so all right. Set there. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Now. Okay, so not browns anymore, but... Done. And uh, the thing is, somebody had told me that mice were grabbing the bounce and building nests out of it. Ah! And so, so what I use now is peppermint oil. Yes, I've heard and I've been that. reading heard stuff about, about that, that online, and I just cut a little square out of aluminum foil, put it on the counter so that the oil doesn't soak into the counter with a cotton ball, and put a few drops of peppermint oil on it. And supposedly that's a real irritant mm. to Moss's nasal passages. It uh. seems to keep them away. Good. And so far it's worked pretty well. Oh and, well, we'll find out. I'll ask again to Franklin. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Okay, what's this then? This is just the top of the refrigerator bed. Okay. And what happens is it just keeps the air circulating through the back of the refrigerator. Okay. And you see all of them, even just a, this one they put it on the, on the side, but most trailers have it up on the top, they put a cap on the top, just oh. so it keeps the flow of air through. Okay. And actually what I did on our older trailer, the 87, sometimes the refrigerator was acting, because we actually traveled out to the desert last year with it, out to Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah. And okay. we, we put a, we actually installed an air conditioner on the roof for the cat. Wow. So he'd be alright during the day when we were camping in the desert. <laughs> but we put, uh, in order, it wasn't cooling down quite as much as it should, so we actually put small computer fans in here and up in the roof vent to so help oh, more air circulate. That's enough. And of course you got 12 volt in anyway, and computer fans are 12 volts, so we just hooked them into the, into the system. Unless you're camping in really extremely hot weather though, you really don't need to think about okay, that. Okay, good. And of course you've got uh, compartments here in the back. One in the front also. That goes all the way through to the other side. Yep. The front doesn't, obviously. And this is your water heater. And this has an electronic ignition for the water heater, which will fire up automatically with a switch inside as soon as you turn the water heater on. And if there isn't propane already in the lines, you'll hear it click a few times and then stop, and it won't fire, because sometimes it takes a while to get the air purged out of the line. We just fired it up last night, though, so you should be okay if you're for, the, for your first camping trip. And you can also run it on electric. There's a rocker switch up inside there, if you want to run it on electric. Okay. And of course, the advantage... The rocker switch, you got to come out here and manually tug it? Yes, yep, you do. Oh, wow. Okay. And of course, there's advantages to both. The advantage with the electric is that you're not using your propane. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it doesn't recover as quickly. So if you want to take a couple showers in a row or you're using a lot of water inside, uh, okay. it recovers faster with the propane than it does with the electric. Now, you can it, run them simultaneously. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, and the water hold tank there, uh, when it's empty, will this thing know not to bother heating it up? Or? No, you have to be aware of that. Ah, okay. But you do have uh, a, a panel inside that shows all the levels on it also, so you oh, know exactly okay. what the status is on your, on your right. water so, yeah, tank. So if you filled up water. with regular, as yeah. opposed to a, a water hookup, then yeah, that's right, where it gets critical yeah, just to keep an eye, eye on that. Because yeah, you, you want to make sure you don't run the water here at all when it's, when it's empty. When it's empty, oh yeah. yeah. 
And do you think you'd be winterizing yourself, or you're going to have us do uh, it? You never know. Okay. Might be. I think we've got uh, a storage place lined up, so okay, it's possible. Because if you do need to winterize it, mm -hmm. then there's a panel right there that you can see. It's removable. Oh, this one right here? Yeah, that one right there. We see the screws. Yeah. That'll give you access to the back of the water heater. Because what you need to do when you winterize the trailer is to Empty pump that. antifreeze in through the entire system. Oh, wow. But of course, you don't want, because that way it goes through all the lines in the faucets. Mm -hmm. But naturally, you don't want to be filling the water heater with six gallons of antifreeze and wasting it. So you want to bypass the so water heater. So you bypass heater. it. There's valves on the back of the water heater. This is the drain plug of the water heater. And so what you do is drain the water out of that first. And then there's bypass valves. So you just turn the valves on the bypass, and it'll cut the water heater out of the system completely. And they say that it's all right to leave, the manufacturers claim it's okay to leave a little bit of water at the bottom of the water heater. And well, for expansion, yeah, it's got nowhere to go. Yeah, it's really got nowhere to go, so you really can't crack on anything. But if you're, if you feel uncomfortable with it, what I've done with mine is once I get the antifreeze in the rest of the system, just open the valve and a little bit of little pink fluid flow into it. That way you've got the antifreeze in the bottom of the tank too. Good idea. Good now what if you're uh, renting a storage space for inside? Uh, it's an inside heated storage space. Do you still have to go through and winterize? You're pretty safe in most areas. It depends on how conscientious the person is. And for a while I was renting a space from Rocky Listella up here. He's in the old Ford garage up here by the bowling, where the old bowling alley and the marine place is. And he's really conscientious. He's in there every single morning. He's got alarms and everything in that place. Oh, but you never know if you have to monitor there. everything. But of course you never know if you lose power inside the storage facility and somebody's not watching. So it's just, it depends on how comfortable you feel with the place where you, where you have it stored. Okay. Good to know. And with me, I rent a garage up in Winchenden because I didn't want to leave the trailers outside. And I have heat in the garage just so I can work on the trailers <laughs> during the winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But of course, they don't keep the heat running all the time. Oh, also, back to stabilizing and leveling. Once you do the leveling side to side, you can unhook, then level front to back. Then these are stabilizing jacks. Yep. And you don't want to use these for leveling throw. They're not strong enough for that. So once you get the trailer actually leveled, then of course the, the leveling front to back you do with the jack in the front of the trailer. So once you get everything level, you just crank down your stabilizing jacks. And there is a, a red. Do you recommend there. putting them on a board or uh, anything underneath? It depends on the surface that you're on. Of course, like up at Salisbury, for example, you're on pavement anyway. Yes. So unless it's a really hot day and the pavement is soft, you're pretty safe. Okay. But if you're on soft ground, I usually carry a few squares of plywood with me or those lynx levelers if you get extra lynx levelers you can use those too okay so those are good for that as well <laughs> and you said there's a is there a wrench for it or yes yeah, there's a wrench it's probably in one of these compartments and this is just oh, oh here's your wrench you. and here is your tire cover tire cover oh. and a propane tank cover. Excellent. And if you decide to go solar, this one is equipped already to hook a solar panel into it. Mm -hmm. And it basically goes on with the battery, right? I would say so. I haven't uh, experienced it myself or known anybody who's used them yet, but I'm assuming it would. And electric outlets over here on the side. Oh, and also when you open the door, You've got clips to hold it up so you don't get hit in the head with the door. Yeah. <laughs> and there's clips on the other side for that. Yep. Okay. Yep. And after you empty out the black water tank, you can hook a garden hose up to this and flush water through it so it'll rinse out the black water tank also. Or if it's if it's not real dirty, get the mud out. You can yep, get, and you can sometimes just flush the toilet a few times also oh, to rinse it out. So depending on how serious you think it is and how much you need to do it. Um, on the uh, axles here, yes, these caps just pop off for grease, right? Yes, yep. For okay. taking the wheel with the wheel bearings. And those, uh, I'm not sure are these. Uh, I don't think these have bearing buddies. Bearing buddies are those automatic things. 
But industry, those don't work very well anyway. They're not very efficient. I have a motorcycle tool that has all on them. And they're still be enough to use them. I depend on them. So you're better off just to repack them the old fashioned way. Okay. The bearing body supposedly don't work all that well. Okay. And uh, let's see. What we'll see the bend. What we still is. Got a light outside. Yep, battery still connected. Here is your, yeah. here's your 30 amp plug. Oh yeah. Let's see what that looks like. So you got the that. From the Air Force. Yeah. And for your slide. There's a switch for your slide, which we're gonna put out so we can have some room in here. And obviously that's running off the battery power right now. It's got that ratcheting sound. Oh, well, you know, it's all the way out. That's a, that's an okay sound. Okay. That just lets you know it's all the way. And does the same thing coming in. Okay. Now, uh, is a dual battery recommended, or that's just free? Hold on. Uh, most people, even with the big trailer that we've got, we just have a single battery on it. Okay. The only time, if you're going to be doing dry camping for a long time without plugging in, and supposedly people have told me that when you run the furnace a lot because of the fan, mm -hmm. it uses a lot of carbon. So if you're going to be doing dry camping and using the heater, it's probably a good idea to do that. Okay. But otherwise, you should be okay. Yeah, I'm not. A, not a, well, it's unlikely I'll be using the heater. Yeah. Most likely, I like it cold. And uh, of course, it's got LED bulbs in it. Oh yeah. And with the LED, of course, those don't use much current anyway. So as long as you're using the lights in it and things like that, then you should be fine. But you, you shouldn't need a second battery. Oh, good. Okay. And up here. There's a panel for your water heater, and another switch for your 12 volt pump. So if you're using your uh, your fresh water tank, you just turn that on, and that'll turn the 12 volt pump on. That's an on-demand pump. So as you open and close the faucets and run the water, you can hear that changing. Ooh. And here's a here's a gauge with uh, buttons for all your all your levels. So of course the battery is fully charged. And the same thing with the fresh. Black's empty. Yep. And the, and the gray and the black. black so those are all empty. Mm -hmm. Over here on this side, you've got an antenna up on the roof. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be using the roof antenna, there's an amplifier. So push this button in and the light comes on. That turns on the amplifier for the roof antenna. Oh, okay. If you're going to be hooking to cable, turn the then just off. turn the amp off and it'll switch it over to the cable that's coming in. And it's a good idea to strap the, the television down so it doesn't swing around. Yeah, I'd say so. While you're traveling. And uh, air conditioning, of course. And there are uh, filter panels, which I believe are inside here. Yep. Sometimes wash or replace, whichever works out for you. That's a filter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like vinyl, so you can probably watch that a few times too before you need yeah, to replace it. Does. it. Oh, nylon yeah, or something. That's probably fairly cleanable. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I nope. just you hit it right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's curved or, or it's warped. Alright, there it is. Feed it. And of course, you got. Adjustments all, all over the place depending on where you want the air to go. Oh, nice. And here's your thermostat that controls everything. And it's usually best to leave the fan on automatic, that way you don't have an unnecessary noise in here and the system will automatically take care of itself. And one more click for cool, we'll turn on the air conditioning, which of course it's not running out because it did 110. Yeah, you need yep. And one more time down for heat, and one more time for off. And this is just typical up or down in the temperature on this side here. And your furnace is, I believe, like most of them, mounted over here under the bed. Nice. So I catch this fire. <laughs> yeah. Burning the bed. Yep. <clears throat> and light switch for the bathroom. And this, this uh, toilet has a lever over on the side for flushing purposes. If you look around the corner, you can see a gray lever on the side of the back of the toilet oh, yeah. to flush. Okay. And 
these fans are absolutely amazing. Some people replace them with uh... This has the, I'm not sure if this is a fantastic phone or the equivalent of, but it does the same job that a fantastic fan does. And you get three speeds and it will shut off automatically if you put the vent down. Yeah, some people replace them with ones with the remote control. Yes, yeah, they do have all kinds of, some have rain sensors and everything else on them, and remote controls and all that. So, uh, with it down and sealed like that, we don't have to worry about putting a, a cover on it. No. That is already covered. Yeah, yeah that's okay. already covered. And what a lot of people were telling me that they do, and see they put a big gap over the door, because those fans suck so much air, instead of turning the air conditioning, people just open the windows and turn on the fan. And it oh, sucks yeah, all the hot air out because they're so efficient. Yeah, they seem to work so well. And of course you got your radio over here. Mm -hmm. Typical controls for the radio. And there is a DVD player built into that as well. And this one, I think... Has a remote somewhere? Yes, there's a remote. For a right. Oh, yeah. right there in the drawer for the TV and for the radio. And extra AV cables. So you can move it or something. <laughs> Is there another see. AV panel somewhere here? That's what I'm just wondering if this one has one on the back. Some of these mount them on the back or not. No, I don't think this one does. But I think the arm is long enough so it'll swing around so you can huh. watch it from the bed also if you need to. Okay. And it also has a USB oh, yeah. and auxiliary end. So I'm you want to hook up your own play three play or something like that to it. Bingo. More yeah. charge things. Or charge things. Yep. Okay. What's next? And there was a fold down rack back here for clothes. Yep. Behind that panel, which is nice. Yep. There's no electronic igniter or pilot on the stove, so carry a stick lighter or something with you or matches. Well, that's easy enough yep. to throw in the drawer. Oh, yeah. And on the yep. two in the car all the time. And on the refrigerator, press and hold to turn the refrigerator on. Start over on the first Okay, press and hold to turn the refrigerator on. And you can choose 110. And see, it knows there's 110, so it flashes to let you know there's no 110 connection. And propane or a 12 volt also. And the 12 volt is kind of nice if you're traveling a long distance and you want to keep it going. Because, and people will, there's kind of a debate whether it's safe to travel with the propane on. Oh. But, of course, with me, taking long trips, like when we went out west, we had kind of had to keep the refrigerator going, and mine doesn't have a 12 volt on it, so we had to use the propane. But if you do need the propane going on a long trip, obviously just make sure before you get gas at the gas station that you turn it off. <laughs> before you pull up to the gas pumps and then turn it back, <coughs> pull away from the gas pumps and turn it back on again. Yeah, boom. Yep. Uh, well, when it's on 12 volt, you can... On 12 volt, you should be fine. Okay. But this has a 12 volt system. Yeah. And I've heard mixed reviews on the efficiency of the 12 volt, but you, know, you can experiment with and see how well it works. And see if, you get, if it cools it down as much as it should. And this is just a temperature control over here. Yeah, and that'll just kind of go all the way up and down. So which one's colder? This is coldest up where the, the longest lines there is colder. Okay. Okay, we have no power. Yep, no power. And the propane is turned off at the moment. And of course the microwave is typical. We didn't take the packaging out of there yet, but I think since I see a rack, this is probably convection also. Yes it is. Yep, they are. Yep. yep which is kind of nice. And under here, you have your fuse panel. And circuit breakers like at home mm -hmm. for 110. Now, uh, automotive type fuses. Is the master the cut off for, say, the battery there? This one doesn't have a cutoff for the battery. Oh, okay. Some do and some don't. This one doesn't happen to have that. And so, if you're not going to be using it, if you're going to keep it in storage for an extended period, mm -hmm. disconnect the battery because you've got sensors and things like that and LEDs. Ah, okay. So, it'll run down the battery. Yes, uh, well, we know somebody that just installed the switch up Cut off, yeah. yeah yeah you can do that too it works pretty well and of course while you're towing the vehicle and while you're towing the trailer the battery charges from your tow vehicle and also it charges when you plug in plugged into electric oh good all right yeah. I was wondering about that yeah. and speaking of which that it, it takes a while it takes a few hours for the refrigerator to cool down 
And so if you want to you get it set up down. Yeah, so so for example, if you get the trailer parked in the yard, mm -hmm. you decide you're gonna go camping, and usually it's a good idea so you're gonna leave on a Saturday on a Friday afternoon. Friday morning, turn on the refrigerator so that way when you get when you get ready to go camping you can start putting your food in. Yeah, prep it. Yep. So that way you can get the refrigerator cooling. Gotcha. But by the same token, you also want to make sure the trail is level. So every time when I get home from a camping trip, I level the trail, I want to pull it into the yard. So that you're all set to go for the next camping trip. That way when you're getting ready to go camping, you don't have to hook up your tow vehicle, level the trailer and all that stuff. You've already got it level from when you came back from camping the last time. Okay. So, yeah, that would, uh, when you park at home, so yeah, when you park at home. camping. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Fair enough. So that way you're ready to go. And should you, you got a ground fault interrupter. We sit right here. Okay, GFI. So that way, yep. So if you lose anything there. But, and there is your um, carbon monoxide sensor down there. Yeah, we hear a lot of complaints online about um, them beeping all the time. And people just getting pissed off and pulling the fuse for that. Any Next. reasons for, is that because right now it's charged and so it's green, but when the battery, we take this home and the, it just sits and then the battery is going to drain and then it's going to start beeping because there's no juice in it? Um, that's possible because I had the same thing happen with mine, but the thing is when we disconnect the battery, I never hear those beeping because after I prep a trailer, if somebody's not picking it up right away, I disconnect the battery. And I never hear that happen. Good. So these, Maybe we won't find so that these, these new ones, the newer ones probably do that. But I had one in my own trailer that was a plug in, it was actually a household plug in type. And it was the same thing as if it wasn't plugged in, then it would start beeping like crazy. Okay. But I think these new ones are probably designed so that doesn't happen, so you don't get false alarms. Okay, good. And there is a yeah, smoke detector here in the back. And there's one more sensor. I'm sorry, this is the carbon monoxide, it's propane down there. I had it wrong. The propane they put close to the floor, carbon monoxide is up here. Okay. And you can test it just like you do a home test button right there, just like you're doing a home smoke detector. Same, Same thing on that one. Did you want to hear it? Yeah, I want to make sure it works. That's what they were hearing in the campground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure would be. Well, when he hears it and I'm at Salisbury Beach, I don't know where to go find <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to come yeah, that's right. me out. <laughs> there you go. I'm on C-22 at Spring Fling. Uh, I'm on 23. You're on C-23? What's the odds? Oh, that's <laughs> wow. pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You are Nancy. Then. No, the other, Jane. We switch sites. Oh, you switch sites. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because twenty three or twenty five. I'm on twenty two, and thing, there was a woman named Nancy Barrett, I think, was it? Who yeah, was gonna, she. Yeah, Nan, yeah I'm on twenty five then, so I'm only a couple away. Okay. <laughs> but loud enough that you can hear when it goes beep, beep, beep. So good. Oh yeah. Because I think because Nancy had put a note out, and she said she might need help backing in or something like that, and so I put a note on. I said, well, I'm going to be arriving on Wednesday. Oh well, then so I'll said, flag you down when I'm in the Let me know if you need help in. backing up. <laughs> And of course, all the lights inside have typical rocker switches on them. Yep. yep. Oh, very nice. Yep. So you got lights all over the place. Like I said, they're all LEDs, so you don't run, it, run down the batteries at all. Questions? So, a uh, manual crank for this if uh, your batteries run down and you're stuck. Yeah. You're supposed to be able to crank it in manually? I believe so. And usually they put a crank somewhere. Oh, also too, while well, I'm over here on this table, there's a, a release right here to put the to, to fold put it down, to fold put the it table there. down. Yep. So pull that out, and the table will fold down, mm -hmm. and rest on these cleats on the table. As opposed to driving with it up, right? Yep. Or you can just strap it down. Oh. And I think there's another strap inside that compartment, so you can just strap it down if you need to. If you want to do that instead of instead of moving it. Well, it could hurt. Probably another strap underneath here. Yeah. Oh, a strap, so yeah, it comes yeah, up and makes the buckle over there. Alright. He's pulled it out. Uh -oh. yeah, that's oh, as far I see as it goes. It goes. Just twist it. Ready? Yep, 
little more. I go too much and then try to get the hay. This gets funnier all the time that we've been camping right in the same row. I know. <laughs> so, uh, the manual crank. Uh, let's see if we can find it and how it works. Let's see if it's in one of the other compartments someplace. Oh, right in there. Let's go outside and see. Sometimes they put a hole on the outside. So far, I've never heard of anybody having a problem with it. Is it is it a check with Dave when it gets back because those all some they all have different uh, different systems all right Bill turn around since I got your name mess <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>